Hey guys, this is National Master Kevin Yang back at it with a video from the Friday, which I played a few games against our fellow chess club members. So let's begin. So I'm analyzing this game that I played, and let's see it from my opponent's point of view. Because, you know, once again, I like to say that you think of things your way, but you always gotta think... Hmm, how does your opponent think? How does he or she think? It's so interesting to look at both sides and just give a good glance. So, I played d4, right? Central pawn, controlling the center. Chess club member does the same. Bishop g5. Now, first of all, it might look as if this move does nothing, right? Number one, I developed this piece to try to just develop it to an active square, right? So we'd rather develop it to here than if it just came here, right? So you'd rather develop it here because at least here it can watch over the your opponent's sort of territory, right? It's sort of like sort of like he's on watch, he's on guard, he's looking at the nearest window, he's looking for hope. So, in this case, you know, I restrict this pawn from being moved out so the bishop can't go out just yet, right? So, my opponent plays bishop f5. Perfect. Just developing, trying to control the center, and that's great. Knight d2, alright? So what I'm doing is I want to eventually get some sort of push here. But I know that right now it is not possible because let's say knight here, bam, the pawn can take, right? And if the knight takes, the bishop takes. So I can't do that yet. So instead my opponent plays e6. Ooh. But, you know... The thing is, now, now, the bishop can capture the queen, right? And that's one thing that the bishop does when it's here. It prevents this bishop from developing this way. Because once this pawn moves, the bishop zaps the queen, right? So bishop f5, d2, e6 was a fatal blow because bishop can take the queen, right? So always remember that, you know, when you, I know that, you know, you have your own plan, but you always got to think, what can I do and what my opponent is threatening? So in this case, my opponent's not threatening every, anything, but if I move a certain piece, will my opponent be able to do something, right? So when you're thinking in chess, usually it comes with, a lot of questions and these questions involve you as a person it could involve what your opponent is thinking so you're basically looking at both sides of the table okay so e6 so i gave my chess club member a chance i said okay you know sometimes we forget about these things so give him a chance queen c8 all right that's good well, another way to do it is develop the bishop out, right? At the same time you're blocking your queen, develop the bishop out or develop the knight out. Those are good moves, but queen c8 is also good. Now, one thing about these two pieces is they do a good job of aiming this sort of pawn break. And that is a good pawn break. So sometimes, you know... Right? You push this pawn to try to control the center. And that that's like an important sort of pawn break in the French defense. So I can show you that if any of you want to know more of the French defense. But now we'll just cover this game. So E3, right? So I'm setting a trap here. And here's the trap. If, for example, you play this pawn break, right? And now, 
here was my trap. I was going to play G4. And why does this work, you might ask? Let's look at this. Bishop E4, right? Attacking the rook, the bishop centralized, but now let's say F3. Okay? F3 happens, and you go back. Then what happens? H5. He controls him, he controls him, he controls him, and the bishop is dead. Right? Let's think about a6. Let's counter him. Let's counter him, right? Look, takes. Takes. And look who got switched. Right? This man fell victim to a deadly hit. So, okay. Um, let's keep going. And so now... You know my trap, right? G4, H5. But my opponent did a great job. Scared away the bishop. And in addition, what more important was this guy can retreat here. So it's sort of like this was a two-purpose move or a dual-purpose move, right? So you could think about... Um, scaring the bishop away, but also you've provided the safe spot. So, okay. Bishop of 4, bishop d6. Developing, and although it might seem like bam, bam, right? It might seem like these doubled pawns seem really weird, but it's not a bad thing, because now you can push like this, right? Now you're able to see this line so there are good things to this double pawn for now. But let's say if if all came down and all you had was these two pawns, then it wouldn't be a good thing. So let's say if all the other pieces were gone and you only had these two guys, right? It wouldn't be a good thing. It wouldn't be happy ending because they're so easy to attack. Like the king could here, 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 and just chop low, right? So it's not easy. These two pawns versus these two pawns. You'd rather have these two pawns. But for now, this pawn can push out like this. So it's not that bad. But okay. Let's get back to the game. I played knight e2, right? So I wanted to, at the same time, protect my bishop once again. I want to provoke maybe force, or I want to encourage this bishop to take this bishop so the knight can come in, right? So there's always a way to develop a piece. And so, takes, takes, knight f6, now I played f3. Why did I play f3? I wanted to play g4, right? I want to keep this sort of setup that maybe I could start like an attack here, just in case if I decide to switch through that way. So castles, right? And now the good time is for attack. So I play g4. H of h7, right? So threatening the bishop. It's got to move back. Now I play g5. He's under control. He's under control. So... At this moment, usually, you know, a lot of people start to panic. They're like, oh my gosh, my opponent is starting to attack, so what do I do? Right? And knight e7. I like this move. The reason why is takes here and takes here. This guy's going to open up, right? So let's say, for example, knight goes back like this. Then it comes queen e2. And the reason why this move is so powerful is because you want to switch to here. You want to go down this way, right? So that's why open files are so powerful. You don't want this guy to be able to come down. So, okay. Knight d7. Really good move by our fellow chess friend. Rook g1. 
Now what I'm doing is I want to take this, right? And obviously he cannot take back because the rook pins the king, right? So it's really important to think, okay, what do I do in this position? Do I have to take? Do I move the king in? There are all these things that we could consider. Moving the king in could be good. I could play like bishop here, right? Bishop takes, knight takes, and maybe eventually get the queen in. That might be an okay turn. Um, now, h5. Also not bad, right? Now, h5. It's not bad. It's, it's, although it's sort of like a pawn sacrifice, right? It's not bad. And the reason being is you're not opening up this rook just yet. You're making the pawns block the rook's way. And so I think it's a good move, but, you know, this pawn was so important in defending your king that maybe it shouldn't be given up just yet. The knight takes... G6. Ooh. So, I gotta tell you a story. So, one game, I played against an opponent, right? And I played the same move G6. I had this bishop on H7, and I realized for the rest of the game, I could never bring this guy out. So, I ended up losing the game, even though I had the same amount of material. I had a bishop, he had a bishop, but the bishop was open, right? But my bishop was stuck in the corner. So by playing this move, you've blocked your guy, right? And that kind of sucks, because he only moves on diagonal. He only goes back, bam, he tries to come out this way, but it's going to take such a long time, right? So it sucks. It, it just looks horrible to play this move. So just just know that, you know, trapping the pieces is, isn't so great. So f5. I like this. I like that, you know, we're able to try to push our way out, but we can notice two things from this move. One, the pawn was pr protecting the pawn, right? So if here, you can play boom. And the second note is that this bishop is looking a little clumsy once again. So I play h5. What I want to do is takes g6, right? This guy is going to look like some, some baloney. So queen e8, perfect, protecting. Knight e6. And as I'm doing it, I'm transferring the queen. I want to take and come down this file, right? So knight e7, now I have knight takes e6. And what this move does, as you'll see in the coming moves, I go bam, bam, right? So these two bing bongs fell, but this would be an interesting move. Queen b8, knight takes, and you sweep them, right? But, you know, our chess club member said it was a mouse slip. I definitely get it that this move is a really good move. I would have played rook h1 right, to guard the queen. And at the same time, remember I w what I was going to do. That's right. We're going to open this file, right? We're going to slam it down this way. But, okay. Mouse slip. Take. Take. Queen d6, I'm coming in, right? Queen b8, ooh, queen takes, queen e8, ooh, queen e6, I want to give my opponent a chance. I cancel. Now I bring in the forces. And this mate will be. But okay. So the main thing is the bishop looked clumsy and other things that you saw in the video. So hopefully you enjoyed it. Thank you.